What's up YouTube, JP here, and have I got an exciting video for you guys. So what do you do if you have an Xbox Series S or X, but you really want to play some old retro games? Whether it be Mega Drive, SNES, SNES, GameCube, Wii, PlayStation. Well now we have a really good solution. And the best part is there's no hacking or voiding warranties. It's 100% reversible and you can do this without having the developer mode on the consoles. So without further delay, let's dive in. Right, so the first thing you want to do is go to the Edge browser. Now if you don't have this installed, you can install it from the Microsoft Store. So we're going to open up the Edge browser. And then we're going to go to Gamer 13. And you can see it's already popped up there. Gamer13.github.io. So we're going to go and click on that. And we can see the link here. So now when you're here, we just need to download the app store. So download app, open, install. So what this is, is it's like an app store, like the Google app store or the Apple app store. And once you've installed it, it looks a little bit like this. So we're going to open this up. And you can see there's quite a few things here we can install. So we've got Flycast, Duck Station, PPSPP. But what we're going to be looking at today is RetroArch. So click Install. Install. Now, like I said, this is all in retail mode. So you don't need dev mode installed on your Xbox to get this. Just makes it a lot more convenient. So let's go back home and we can see that's installing. So I'm going to fast forward the video here until it's completely fully installed. Okay, that's completely installed. So there's a couple of things we want to do here before we can actually play any games. So we're going to want to go into settings and all the way to the bottom where it says directory. And there's a couple of things we're going to change in here. So configs all the way to the bottom. Config use this directory. Core info. Select info use this directory and then database is the same down to the bottom database, use this directory. We'll go back and there's another thing that I like to change. If we go into input, go into hotkeys, menu toggle, controller combo and then L3, R3. What this will do is when you push down both thumbsticks together it will take you back to the retro arch menu so you can close that game that you play in and load new games and change settings and things so we'll go back back again we'll go to the main menu configuration file save current configuration now what we want to do is go to online updater and there's a couple of things in here we need to update we're going to Update core info files. We're going to update controller profiles. And we're going to update the assets. Now when that's done, the font should change. There we go. So now we've done that, we're going to go back into configuration file, save con current configuration. 
So once we've done that, RetroArch is ready to use. So we're going to go over to the PC, put some games on a USB stick or external hard drive and configure that. So let's jump over to the PC. So now we're back on the PC. I have a external USB hard drive and what I've already done is I've formatted it to NTFS and I've just labeled it Xbox. Nothing special there. I've created a folder called games and in that folder I have various systems. So you can see here I've got Dreamcast, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, GameCube, Game Gear, N64 and NES. Dreamcast games, I've just put Sega Rally on here. This is how I ripped it from the original disc. Game Boy games, adult zip files, Game Boy Color zip files. Uh, we've got some GameCube games that are ripped. These are just ISOs. So it's just a case of just putting it all in here. Now what you do need to do is set the permissions for this external hard drive. So if we go into properties, you have to go to security, advanced, add, select a principle, advance, find now. And what you're looking for is all application packages. So you'll click OK, OK again. And this option here, apply the permissions to all objects or containers within this container. OK. And then replace all child object permissions. Click that. Click OK. Click Yes. And what that will basically do is allow us to connect this hard drive and it can be read by the Xbox Series S or X. So now we've done that, let's jump back over to the Xbox and connect the hard drive. So now we're back on the Xbox, let's plug in the USB hard drive. And then we can see that it's connected. Now if it gives you the option what you want to use the hard drive for, just click on the media option. Let's launch RetroArch, then we want to load content. Now if you only have the one USB hard drive plugged in, it will always be D. So click on D, straight away we can see games here. And then you can select what games you want to play. So let's launch the Dreamcast Sega Rally game. And we're going to click on the, the GDI file. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at a few games running on the Xbox Series S through the RetroArch app. 200, easy left, in ground. 300, more easy left. So I'm going to end the video here. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'd also like to remind you that we're very close to 3000 subscribers. And when we do hit 3000 subscribers, I'll be giving away an Xbox Series S. So I'm JP, you've been watching Alien Gaming and I'll catch you in the next one.